I'd like to introduce Suraj Kumar Mato, who's going to talk about forming an SSH cluster with old smartphones. Okay. Uh, so, sorry for the delay, guys. Uh, sorry for the delay, folks. I guess I won't take uh, much more time. I, I'll take around 15 minutes. So my, the topic I'm going to talk about is, I mean, there is not much technicality to it, but uh, the idea of it is uh, much thought-provoking about sustainable computing. Um, it touches a very sensitive to topic of uh, climate change, how uh, FOSS can, I mean, create an Im impact on, on this topic of uh, climate change. So, what is e-waste? So, let's get on our story. You buy, buy smartphones, Android smartphones, iOS smartphones. Uh, some of us folks are using uh, Libre smartphones. You get an update to your phone, you throw your phone, phone away, it just stays in your uh, desk or uh, in your closet. And uh, I mean, it's, it's part of, of the e-waste, uh, building up and up and creating a huge pile of load on this environment. Let's talk of some statistics and numbers here. So. It was projected by WEEE organization that around 5.3 billion smartphones were expected to drop. I mean, uh, expected to be discarded. So uh, let let I am assuming that an average smartphone is of size, let's say nine mm nine millimeters. So you multiply th that into 5.3 billion. That's around around 48 kilometers of uh, pile uh, pile of garbage. Not exactly garbage. We'll uh, ponder upon. It's not an. It's not a garbage. Let's analyze this statistic. So, um, International Space Station is at some distance x. Uh, so when you pile away all all these discarded smartphones, the the height it gets up to is around 120x. Just. I mean, uh, it's about covering one by eighth of the distance between Earth and Moon. So what do we have in stake here? We, uh, I mean, this e-waste. So we have recyclable metals that are, uh, I mean, piling up in garbage dump trucks. Uh, we have reusable metals and components, for example, batteries uh, that has been mined uh, up in wasting energy resources, etc. The, the 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 thing I'm going to discuss about in my presentation is about computational power. Can we uh, use the computational power of these smartphones? Uh, can, yeah. So, I I thought of an idea last year. So l let's make a cluster smartphone cluster out of it. So what are the bottlenecks? We, so when you think of smartphones, uh, each and every smartphone, especially in the Android segment, is of different hardware. Although they're all, all of them, majority of them are ARM architecture, but uh, the, spe the hardware specifications differ a lot. So heterogeneous cluster, heterogeneous clustering is, uh, I mean, uh, you'll have to think upon the optimizations Harder optimizations and uh, how can you use the best? How can you uh, best take the best use of resources uh, from these heterogeneous devices? One thing I was think uh, I mean pondering upon was uh, using Open MPI or MPI CH. So this was a very basic idea on, so I'll, I'll be having one access point, one master device that will be controlling the old smartphones and, uh, I mean, parallelly computing uh, on these smart, I'm just using the computational power of these old smartphones uh, parallelly. So, uh, 
so this was very uh, this was a very broad idea so uh, I, uh, so let I'm, I'm taking this in some direction or flow so what i do is collect a bunch of old smartphones so uh, the next thing was what operating system uh, i'll be flashing on them to have these cluster clusters of these devices so the f uh, the first thing was android i mean the, these are uh, these were android smartphones so why not just use android uh, i mean using a terminal emulator on them and then uh, making and uh, making a ssh cluster out of it but uh, the the very main problem with these android android uh, devices were not having a root access so i can't uh, do much changes changes on these uh, smartphones and these android devices are i mean the 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 very basic software is not running natively on them they use a uh, jvm to uh, uh, run things up there so uh, so i decided on hey let's uh, go on to using linux on these smartphones and then make ssh server out of it uh, then think upon what can we do next to improve this uh, idea deciding on technologies uh, so i so uh, I, i decided that let's uh, i'm using ssh i'm to uh, i mean run parallel par run program parallelly on them uh, to run these program i uh, i chose open mpi so uh, the libraries were uh, quite extensive and good enough for me to run those programs parallelly and for, to manage these uh, you know to have a uh, to have a shared resource of uh, file sharing and uh, de device storage i used nfs protocol so the next question was which operating system so i had a bunch of uh, operating systems in my mind it was obviously linux and mobile so the very first idea was using mobian and the second option was using post market os so i i get into the fast boot mode of all these uh, all these smartphones to in, uh, to have a third party access uh, to flash third party firmwares on these devices then i then i flash uh, these operating systems using fast boot yeah then you then setting up nfs i set, i uh, then proceeded on to set up uh, an, uh, an SS, ssh server um using open ssh for benchmarking i was using open mp c library to test on how uh, my programs are running parallelly on them so what what was the conclusion out of it i mean is it really worth it absolutely yes so the main thing is and the main question is what is the use case here the the very first thing so uh, uh, let, let's talk of uh, people collectively living in societies uh, let's say we we have a living family of five people um, in each each family there are around 3 to 4 members and every member is using one smartphone they discard away those smartphones two or three years later you collect those smartphones and have a collective a collective ssh server you use the this computational resources to host your own set of uh, fos softwares like your own media server like your own uh, media streaming solution data data storage or just using it to host your own websites what more can be done on this was uh, you can have just, so th this this process requires a lot of technical barriers so in, in think if 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 you think upon uh, people who are from non tech background we can think of a wrapper ui on top of it 
So the process just starts on with uh, going on to your fast boot mode in your Android smartphone, uh, and then giving them a beautiful UI where you, they can just click on and the third-party firmware or Linux on mobile gets automatically flashed on them, and then uh, you give them good. You give them options in the UI to 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 sell to uh, to select which which are the worker nodes which which is the master node and uh, collectively form a ssh cluster out of it yeah these are the some these are some sources of the websites uh, these are some websites where i put down the statistics from i would like to have some questions if there are any. All right. Let's get started with questions. Uh, hi. Uh, so recently, I got a chance to play around with uh, two PCs that uh, were having, you know, uses MPI. Uh, it was for my friend who is a research scholar and uh, he basically uses material simula simulation using WASP. Okay, so for that, he requires uh, pretty much amount of you know resources. And uh, we both set it up over a LAN cable. And still, like uh, he mentioned me that this is not enough the you know the bandwidth and you know uh, it it won't be enough to actually provide a significant amount of boost. So like. Uh, also, the programs that we were able to run are like uh, using that mpaxic command. So uh, I'm not sure. And uh, we had to compile some stuff. And uh, for that also, we couldn't fully utilize all the cores. So my question is that uh, will we will you know are there apps that would be able to utilize this much amount of memory? Are there uh, any developments that being happened? To you know, utilize such a clusters. Yeah, the the main problem the, of these clusters are these are heterogeneous devices. So, uh, you know, getting uh, u utilizing the full amount of resources from these smartphones is quite a, a bottleneck here. But I, when I tested on my side, I used two old Android smartphones. The computational power was well enough to host one HTML page here. So I'm not talking of one or two devices. Let's, let's just say we have one society where 100 families are living. If they collectively, uh, I mean, drop their old smartphones, let's say we have 100 to 200 smartphones, at least we have some X amount of computational resources that are just sitting in the closets of people uh, that would be of some use maybe. Let's say uh, we use this computational resource to help the kids uh, in the society to learn programming or uh, networking. So uh, the main purpose of this uh, feasibility study was that uh, we should not use any uh, untouched or left computational resources. Uh, I mean, by instead of discarding them away, or another option would be extracting these uh, metals out of these devices but if uh, you uh, you already know that these uh, this is um, i mean com not a feasible task so uh, my question is uh, this is this is a very good approach indeed but i have a suggestion for you instead of uh, having these multiple phones as a cluster you should uh, basically work like you can have the old laptops, old desktops, basically of Pentium 4, Pentium 3 series, okay. So they can have Debian or any OS installed and it will give a numerous amount of power. Reason, you need to fast boot mode your phone, then perform root, then flash, then multiple phones will not even support the network because they were below 802.11 and Wi-Fi, okay. So you cannot have a SIM card and it will be a very difficult task to have old Wi-Fi access point, then connect it to a Wi-Fi, then have the power, then charge the battery, okay. So that will create a bottleneck. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I get your point. I mean, uh, I'll means there there is a bunch of waste in the market of old desktops of Pentium 4, Pentium 3. Those are just lying. There's a bunch of waste. Yeah, got it. So in case of smart, so if you see a life cycle of a product by an end user of a smartphone or a laptop, uh, we generally see that smartphone users do tend to change their smartphones every two or three, uh, three years. But if we think upon laptops or desktops, people usually you know, uh, upgrade them or the life, the life shelf of these devices are more than five to six years. So you do have the, the amount of these devices are quite low as compared to smartphones. But I do get your point and consider it. Definitely do a feasibility study on that as well. Thank you for the presentation. I was like asking for your fu future plans. Like, uh, are you going to build a base OS and like port that to all the smartphones that you plan to, let's say, support, or like start with a vanilla OS on the phone and then pass boot that to the to install the package you want to use? So uh, my current plans are working on the wrapper UI. I, as I just showed it in my presentation. So it, to make the process of this easy, you know, so for me to do this feasibility study was also uh, a cumbersome task coming from the technical background itself. So you take your smartphone, you flash third party firmware onto it, you then flash uh, mobile Linux onto it, then you form a cluster, you, you enable SSH, you form a cluster out of it. This, this goes on a long, the, the process flow is quite long. So, uh, the, my next step was to, uh, you know, have a wrapper UI on top of it so that I can easily test on multiple devices and then think, um, think upon, uh, you know, uh, what what will be best for him according to you. And the, and one thing I I have future plans is uh, by looking on the economic side of it. So, is this an uh, is this a, an economically viable option? So, can we have a FOSS entity which actually uh, generates profit out of this idea. Do we have any more questions? All right, uh, let's go ahead and thank Siraj again. Thank you.